Hey, I'm Kyle, and together we're going to create beautiful websites. Welcome back and hello new devs. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of CSS animation and bringing life to our websites using keyframes to control our CSS properties over time, creating animations like these. In our last video, we talked about CSS transitions and CSS timing functions. If you haven't seen that video yet, please click up here or in the description and watch that video first. But first, thank you to the sponsor of our show, Hover.com. If you like what you see and want to support the show and get 10% off your own custom domain name, go to Hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. And with that, let's get started. Night and day. Last time we learned how to transition between two states using transitions. Now we're going to take our animation to the next level, and we're going to allow more than two states and give us control over playback, like the ability to loop our animations. But let's go over some basics, and then we'll build this like button and this login form. So how are animations different from transition? Well first, CSS animations allow us to make use of keyframes. Transitions essentially only have two keyframes. They have a from and a to. But with CSS animations, we can have multiple keyframes and more control. We start by creating our animation that we can assign to our elements later. We define an animation with at keyframes and the name we want for our animation. Inside, you can define our from and to keyframes and put in the properties you want to change like scaling from zero to 100%. Then on the element we want to animate, we can add the animation property and put in the duration of our animation followed by the name for our animation. What we did here is similar to a transition, but it just plays from start to finish when we load the page. And we want to be able to have more than two keyframes in our animations. We can swap out the from and to keyframes with percentages and add in more steps. And that's really the secret to CSS animations. But like we said, we have a lot more control. The animation property takes more values than the two we've given it, or we can break them down into their separate properties. Animation name and animation duration we went over already. We also have animation timing function, which we went over in detail in our last video, but in short, this affects the speed of our animation over time. Animation delay, which might be self-explanatory, pauses our animation in the beginning. And then we have the fun ones. Animation iteration count tells us how many times to cycle through an animation. By default, this is set to one, but you could set it to any number or even infinite or a fraction of a number, like two and a half times. We have animation direction, our animation plays forwards by default, but it can run in reverse, or it can alternate each time the animation cycles if you're iterating it more than once. And animation fill mode is a pretty important one. Fill mode tells the browser what to do before and after the animation plays. By default, your animation will snap back to its starting point because this is set to none. Setting this to forward will stop the animation where it is at the end. Backwards you probably won't use too often, so I'm going to kind of skip past this, but it's used when the first keyframe value is different from the static value. And if you have a delay in your animation, it will start the delay on the first keyframe instead of before it, so you don't see a weird change when the animation starts. And both will simply combine the former. Lastly, we have animation play state, which specifies if our animation is running or paused. In CSS alone, this isn't very useful, but like with most of these properties, it becomes extremely useful when you utilize JavaScript to create more complex animations. While I still have you, let's go over some quick examples. For this like button, I'm gonna leave you the code in the description for you to hop right into the animation. We have a button with an icon on it, and using some JavaScript, when we click on it, a class is added which triggers our animation. Of course, you could use JavaScript to add the animation itself to the element, but whatever works for you. We define our animation like so. We have the animation action like with three keyframes. In our first frame, we define our starting point, which isn't truly necessary since it's the same as our static position, but I like putting it there anyway. Then 60% of the way through the animation, we will have rotated 360 degrees, moved up 25 pixels, and grown four times the original size. Then on the last frame, we move up more and double in size while fading out to zero opacity. That animation was put in a class liked element, and we add that class to our element with JavaScript on a click, which triggers our animation. And of course, there's a lot of different ways we could have done that. 
The next example is a little bit more complex, but overall still pretty simple. The HTML is pretty simple for our form and we have some CSS styling our components. The code is of course available in the description. When the form loads, you can see the form itself and the inputs rise and scale up and the header grows from the left in. And when you click submit, the whole form rises and fades out. This example has three different keyframe animations. Pop in is what we named our main animation and it has three keyframes. The animation starts with zero opacity, 100 pixels below its starting point. Then it fades in and scales up past 100% and 10 pixels higher than its final stop on its last keyframe at baseline and full scale. We then simply add our animation to our form and our inputs. But if you look at our example, there's this neat little effect where the timing of each input is offset just slightly. And the way we did that is with the use of pseudo classes. We are just adding an animation delay to each nth child of the form where the type is an input. We'll give it a 10 millisecond delay using the animation delay property. Making the header grow in from the left is easy enough, only two keyframes. This animation is called slide X. We set the opacity to one because our element is set to zero by default so that we don't see it before the animation starts with our delay. Then we just set our X scale from zero to one. Now we add the animation to our header element, but by default, our animation would scale from the center. And what we want is for it to scale from the center on the left to the right. We will first move the origin points of the transform using transform origin left center. We will also set the animation fill mode to forwards so that the header stays at full opacity at the end of the animation. And we'll give it a delay so that it doesn't start until the other elements have already popped in. The last animation is slide up and it moves up 300 pixels and fades out. Rather than assigning this animation to a class this time, this example adds the animation directly with the use of JavaScript. I want to get into JavaScript with you guys, but that's a whole other animal. Let me know in the comments if you want some JavaScript tutorials. Now we should have a completed animated form. Add some CSS animations to your web design portfolio to show off what you've learned. While you're at it, why don't you pick yourself up a .io domain name with 10% off from our sponsor, Hover.com. Hover.com has a huge selection of domain extensions to choose from, and it gives you the freedom to do what you want with your personal brand. You don't have to get your domain name packaged in with some hosting provider and get stuck with their service. Get a domain from Hover and point it to your portfolio or your YouTube channel or easily connect it to any of your favorite services. You never know when you might need a change of scenery. Get 10% off your next domain with Hover and support the show by going to hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. Thanks for sticking through to the end of it. If you are still here, it's much appreciated. Please come hang out on Twitter and Facebook. We even have an Instagram. Things are always happening and you'll want to know about it. Make sure to hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you get notified every time we put up a new video. And with that, I'll see you next time.